Hello and welcome back to the FEZ Show. My name is Jack Jordan Maynard and we have quite a bit of news to go through today, including some interesting breaking news which has just happened literally as we have come on air. So joining me today to discuss everything Formula E is the one and only Jack Pickering. How are you, Jack? Hello, mate. Uh, yeah, it's been it's 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 been a very very big week in terms of in terms of news for Formula E. There's been so much happening, and um, I don't think I've got enough time to add anything else to it. So let's probably just get on with it. So let's start with the breaking news. Now we've been expecting this breaking news. We talked about it last time on the show with our potential drivers. Well, obviously, we mentioned we actually didn't mention the name that was signed, which I think. Maybe silly of us to forget that Norman Nato was a reserve driver, but obviously he has been signed by Venture because we focus more on Arthur Leclerc, uh, focus a bit on Jake Hughes because there was a lot of speculation about Jake Hughes looking into Formula E. He said he wanted to go into Formula E. And then we also had the long shot of Nelson Piquet Jr., which, you know, would have been a long shot, but we understood that. But Norman... He didn't really get a look in in terms of if he was if we were drawing up a shortlist if if I think if it was a Formula E zone shortlist, he somehow missed the grade and maybe a bit unfairly so. Um, so first thoughts, Jack. What do you think on the signing of Norman Nato? Well, he's um he's a proven racer. He he had a very good Le Mans um uh, uh, about a month ago now um. And he uh, he's done a few seasons in um, in GP two slash F two, um, and so yeah, I think uh, I I think he's a proven racing driver in that regard. Um, I I'm not that surprised in terms of, like they've just promoted their reserve driver a bit like what Virgin did once they lost Sam, um, but yeah, I think I think he I think he's a proven driver, and I think. This season, alongside um, Eduardo Mortara, I think he's 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 got a tall order because Eduardo's very quick, as we've seen over the past few years. But um, I think he can get the results there or thereabout um, throughout this season. I think obviously he was second in the Le Mans Twenty Four Hours in September that you mentioned. I think that's second in the LMP One, like overall um, class. I don't think he was second in like LMP Two. I think he was part of the Rebellion squad. Um, so I think it's a good signing because when you think about it, if you sign Jake Hughes, it's a rookie, right? Norman Nato has done two, has done two rookie tests in Marrakesh with the team. So you, he's learned a bit. He's done a lot of simulator work. So you're going to hope that he and Susie Wolf, I think, that he is a driver that sort of knows the car, knows the team and is able to just fit right in, right? And then just fit right in and absolutely go and hopefully you know, match Eduardo Mortara, because that's what they need. Venturi were a bit streaky last season, I think. In terms of, you know, Eduardo Mortara would do well, and then Felipe Massa might not do so well. Or sometimes Felipe Massa would do well, and Eduardo Mortara is nowhere to be seen, right? And I think, hopefully, they need the two drivers battling sort of each other, but also pushing the team forward. And hopefully, with this signing, Jack, that maybe, you know, it could be a step in the right direction for Venturi as a team, as a unit, because they know Norman, they can, they know what he likes, you know, they've had the technical feedback, he's been driving the simulation, so he's been giving the feedback to the race team, so, you know, he's not an alien coming into the team, he knows them quite well, and hopefully, when we get to testing in Valencia, you know, both drivers can really go, no, 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 we've had this problem last year, or no, you've made a really good step forward from last year, and, and hopefully for Venturi, because Venturi are a team at the moment that are, are midfield and would love to move back forward. But they are remembering they did win a race in season five. But you'd think when you think Venturi, Jack, you think they're not going to challenge that much. And obviously you, Susie Wolves and the Mercedes brand, obviously that's with power training them, want them to move forward. Well, yeah, I think the, um, I think the, Merc, the Merc power train that they adopted last year, I think... Uh, I think as the seasons go on, Mercedes are going to bring a better power drain year on year, as we've seen with um, with uh, Formula One for the, for the last um, uh, six or seven years now, and um, uh, and so yeah, I th I think that's a massive positive for Venturi, and the fact that they, um, the uh, the fact that they have just brought their reserve driver up, I think I I think will hit help them in the way in in the ways that you stated. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be. 
uh, r right out the gate really quick. Um, I still, I, I, I think he will. I think he'll be there or thereabout. Um, I th uh, it, it'll pick up a handful of points over like the f uh, over the first few races. I, uh, I reckon. But um, yeah, I think they've they probably made the right choice. I don't think it'll be enough for them to go further up the field. However, if they keep battling with Mahindra like they've done, um, like they've done the last couple of seasons, then then I think that will be a successful story for Venturi. Just thinking very quickly, just before we end this topic and move on, do you think the likes of the JQs of this world were on that short list? And, you know, obviously Arthur Leclerc, obviously who's also part of the reserve driver, who's doing really well. And, and we were talking about Arthur Leclerc as a markability driver, being the brother of Charles Leclerc. And, you know, you're thinking maybe he's part of the same gene pool, you know, maybe he could be quick he's a bit younger and he's doing really well at the moment i think he's in formula four correct me if i'm wrong um but he's doing he's doing really well at the moment in that series with he's, he's in the same series as what jamie chadwick is in and obviously a lot of people have been seeing if jamie chadwick is the real deal in that series uh which leclerc i think was leading the championship at the last point that i checked so I think, do you think like to people like Leclerc were looked at and, and possibly Jake Hughes? And, but do you see why? Mm -hmm. When you look at those names, you probably can understand why Norman Nato um, has moved into the race seat. I, th I think that for Venturi, there was a relatively long shortlist because there were plenty of experienced drivers um, still out for grabs. I mean, I think it's... I think it's fairly likely that we will not see Jerome D'Ambrosio on the grid next season, which is unfortunate because that means that we're down to three drivers who have competed in every single race in um, in Formula E. But um, but there are st um, uh, but I'm I'm fairly certain that that was a relatively long shortlist with uh, Jake Hughes with Arthur Leclerc. Um, you said Nelson Piquet for some reason that I still don't really understand, but we'll go with it. Um, and then I said, uh, I said Jerome as well. Um, I thought, I thought maybe he'd move across like that with the Merck powertrain. But no, they uh, they stuck with they stuck with what they knew, and uh, I feel yeah. And so we'll have to see how Venturi go with that for um you know, for season seven. I think it's obviously their driver lineup is quite important, and obviously how they progress Venturi is important this season because moving on. In quite a surprising story, actually, which I think no one in FE was expecting. The way Neo333 was sort of handling themselves for last season by being a customer team of Dragon, taking the last season's powertrain, you know, being part of this Shanghai Li Jiang racing team that had taken over from the actual Neo brand and Neo had become a title sponsor. There was a lot of question marks, Jack, on, you know, the direction that Neo were going in. And this week, you know, Neo have, Neo have sort of answered, or the Ch uh, the Chang Shanghai, that's the that's the name of the city, Shanghai. Um, that that Li Jiang Racing team um, have sort of told us what they're doing, and I was shocked actually, Jack, when they said in the press release that you know we've become a manufacturer now, we have built our own powertrain. Were you expecting that? No, no, not at all. Um, we were we we, we were talking about. No, even as little as a month ago, saying should Neo become a uh, a um, a customer powertrain supplier um, for for one of the uh, for, from one of the big teams? Um, yeah, no, that came that came a bit out of the blue, um, and I think I think no one really expected to see that. I, th I I I'm I'm happy to see that because I think it shows that like last year they just they just. They're like, okay, yeah, we'll take this powertrain. We'll be towards the back, but we're going to develop our own mega one for season seven. Well, we hope it's mega anyways, because it, it hasn't been a good last couple of years for Neo. Um, in the press release, they said that their reliability was absolutely fantastic. So that's good to know. And so because it's fantastic, they're now working heavily on, um, on the performance of it. And then... Hopefully, well, we'll see in winter testing at some point um, uh, at, the, uh, at, uh, at the end of November. Fingers crossed they might be further up the field. And with a, uh, with a lineup, they've, they're retaining Oliver Turvey for next season. Um, they doubly confirmed on that because 
I, th- I, I, I think it's something that none of us at FEZ kind of realised. We thought we they were all like on one year contracts or everything. No, Ollie was on a multiple year deal with um with the Neo, so he's staying, and uh, the second seat is still yet to be announced. I'd be surprised if it isn't Daniel Apt or Martin Qua, but. The Neo car, it sounds a lot more promising than the last couple of years, at least. Tom Blomquist has actually been testing alongside Oliver Turvey. Um, so I thought I found that very interesting as well when I found that out. So I don't think Daniel... Uh, I think Daniel Lapp's still shoe in. Why they may be tested? Probably because of the G's in Germany and they've been testing in England. So they needed a British driver. So Tom Blomquist is British, living in England. Therefore, easy to get hold of, easy to test. So, can't read too much into Tom Blomquist doing the test, but you never know, he may become a reserve driver. Honestly, with coronavirus at this precise moment, and marching while being in China, he may have had a contract, and he did state to us that he had a contract for Season 7 to be in that car. But with him being in China, with all the restrictions that's going on, I know China might be getting a bit better, but obviously, I don't, to be honest with you, I haven't really seen much of the news lately in, in China with coronavirus. I know like Vietnam was doing really well, even though there was an official announcement of the Vietnam Grand Prix being cancelled, but it wasn't on the calendar anyway, so kind of realised. But anyway, moving on from that, um, you know, I don't know if he will be in the car. So there is a spot there for Daniel App. And even if Tom Blomquist jumps in and has to jump in or Daniel App, you know, decides, you know what? I said I was going to take a break from Formula E. I'm happy that I got a second chance with Neo, but actually, on consideration, I'm actually happy to step away. Who knows? Who knows if that's what he's decided to do? Um, so we'll find out soon because there's actually, you know, we're already now like October 16th, I think, or 15th when we're recording this. And you're thinking, but well, there's still Dragon to like have a lineup confirmed. You've still got Neo, obviously, Oliver Turvey, we know, uh, has a lineup driver he's got a team so there's still a few seats available for for drivers to jump and go from one place to the other um which will be quite interesting to see and you're thinking well venturi have announced it now you still got bmw which we're going to get onto soon about there but you know they still got to announce a driver mahindra still have to announce a driver so over these next couple of weeks it's going to be really interesting in a driver market when the final pieces of the puzzles are put into place as we go to valencia so going back to the original point of neo what i found interesting from the press release jack is that they seem to understand and it seems like it was a plan move to have the dragon powertrain they knew they were going to be slow it was all about let's just build build the team get players they've brought in new engineers they've made some signings let's find out where we are where our base is and build this powertrain and move forward and become some sort of you know successful racing team they wanted that you know they said in the press release it was their biggest investment and i think jack that was what i was interested in is that this was his plan and we've put in an interview request for christian silk from neo who hopefully can explain more to us about that but i'm interested about this plan thing knowing that it was a planned approach what do you make of that i think at the end of the day that might that might be very clever from neo um deciding to uh, just just abandon season six uh, o- overall, and then just go for uh, and then just go for a season seven attack. Uh, I'm not sure how long in advance they were planning this, um, but I'm not sure whether like COVID may have like played a part into it or not, or 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 anything like that. But um, but yeah, I I'm I am excited by the prospect of this, and I'm hoping that they'll be able to. I'm not going to say, yeah, they're going to win race, they're going to fight for podiums, but if they can fight for the lower end of the points, week in, week out, and Ollie Turvey can get a few Super Bowls, then I think that that will be a rather successful um, season for Neo as a team. Uh, but, yeah, I, uh, but yeah, I think maybe they saw Season 5, because e- even then, Season 5 was not great for them. Season 4 was fantastic. They got their first podium in years at the Mexico City race where where Ollie finished second um season 5 just didn't really work out uh, work out for them i think they only got a handful of points and uh, and Tom Dillman didn't score a point that season um and then uh, and then obviously they kind of just must have just been like now nah, we'll just focus on season 7 rather 
rather early on because they did choose relatively late in, in the day in season six to abandon their powertrain and go with dragon but hopefully this is a move that will pay off for them and they'll be able to at least nab more points than they have over the previous two years I think for me, Jack, is Oliver Turvey. I think that was the key. I remember, I always go back to the interview we did with Oli um, back in the end of May, and you could just tell the frustration in his voice, right, when you're talking about, you know, what's gone wrong, what the issues are, and, you know, he's been part of that team since, not day dot, but close enough, in like in season one when he joined at the last final two races of the season. And, you know, we said to him, like, all the drivers say that you're underrated and you deserve to be fighting in a a really good car. And, like, how does that make him feel? And you could tell the frustration that he wasn't doing that, if that makes sense. Um, So I think for me, I don't know how long left of Oliver Turvey's contract is, but I think this is a big moment for Neo. If they can prove to Turvey that it was right staying, right, for this season and not breaking his contract, and moving to potentially to another season, staying, work with this new powertrain. And if it does work for him, then he's like, okay, right, I've got a team now. We're moving in the right direction. I've still got plenty of years left in him. We all know Oliver Turvey's still got plenty of years left in him. You know, maybe I can make it, I can build this team back towards the front, their heyday where they were in season one. But if it does not work, then surely the conversation's got to start flying again that Oliver Turvey needs to skip that team as quickly as possible. Uh, 100%. Um, I, th- I have, uh, uh, after seeing that press release, I do have, I, I, I do feel a lot more confident in Neo for this season. But, yeah, I think we will uh, definitely revisit this um, during the um, during the week of testing. And then also after the first few races in Santiago, in Mexico City, and after that double header in Diria as well. No, yeah, I think you're absolutely right in terms of we'll we'll be spot we'll we sort of be well no right if they're not good you can't really do much unless they can find something amazing in their software because the hardware I think is already like homologated I think so they're good with the reliability so they even now they can only really work on the software of the car and, and see if that can make any progress there we saw Jaguar make progress there um, through the course of the season and obviously um, Virgin Racing obviously being better than Audi at their own powertrain so um, and obviously Audi then catching up so progress can still be made throughout the season so it'll obviously be interesting to see where they are and what progress they can make and where they are on the grid because you know Oliver Turvey has been a loyal servant to that team and everyone says he deserves a seat and, you know, his loyalties is to Neo and fair play to him. But I feel like this is the third chance now, like season five. Okay, moving into Gen 2, let's move forward. Let's, oh, we didn't go forward. Season six, oh, you decided to go to Dragon. Season five, we're not going to be very good. Season seven, okay, we've got a new powertrain. We've got this powertrain for two years, okay, let's move forward with it and as best that we can um so i think that'll be very interesting but let's move on um because we want to talk bmw we mentioned it earlier with their sort of driver lineup obviously we have maximilian gunther uh, confirmed but who was that second seat and obviously we were talking oliver turvey for that second seat now from what we've seen from the press release it's pretty clear oliver turvey is not going to bmw so it looks like he was probably mainly the only candidate I would say the one of, there was probably other suitable candidates that have probably applied for that position, but the only suitable candidate with formulary experience that I felt warranted that seat. Like you could argue to me right now, Jerome D'Ambrosio, but I don't think Jerome D'Ambrosio sort of deserves to jump into a BMW. I just, you know, I don't, I don't know. Whereas, so it looks very much like that BMW will be promoting within their BMW driver program. And it looks like that man will be Philip Eng. So what do you think on that? And do you think there are some other drivers that could be in potential to take that seat? I think with Oli Turvey, it was a massive long shot. And we were just making up some stuff just to like spice it up and think may- maybe, maybe they could do that. But no, I think um, I think the smart money was has always been on Philip Eng. For this seat, uh, I haven't seen much of him. I know that he's done um, a few seasons in World Endurance Championship. Um, apart from apart from that, I really don't know um, much about him. 
at all. Uh, but however, I think in terms of BMW, that's probably the right thing to do because they lost Alexander Sims um, to Mahindra. And and as the pieces of the puzzle start to fit in more, I think it does look more and more like uh, it will be Eng in the in the BMW seat. We'll see Alex Lynn in the Mahindra seat, and then we'll see uh, we'll see all these other seats like Dragon will be Muller and set a camera, and they'll all just slot into they'll all just slot into place over the coming over the coming. Yeah, but I, there still could be some surprises, you know. Nelson PK Jr. He could still do it. No, no, you're shaking your head at me. Ah, uh, well, I really hope that. I, I don't know why. I just feel like I still feel like there's another reason to why. And if there's a team that he could go for, because Sergio Sete Camera, just talking off the cuff here. Obviously, he's, he's become the. I think he was already the Alfa Romeo, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri. Uh, reserve driver. He is definitely now, definitely, I don't know if he's signed as the Avatari Racing uh, Reserve Driver. So, you know, with Danny Fiat, you know, there's always talk about Danny Fiat. He does, that kid does nothing wrong. But you never know. He could be finding a way into that Red Bull seat, uh, to, uh, Alpha Tauri seat. Yeah, there, there are quite, uh, and, while, and whilst Formula One silly season is going through the absolute, um, uh, going through the absolute mill as well with, um, Hulkenberg and Perez linked to Red Bull and everything else happening and then how everything else would sort out Gasly to Renault and Perez to Williams and what whatever the hell is going on there um but um but yeah we uh, I have seen a few reports saying like Grosjean would be interested in coming to Formula E uh I think I think the the smart money the smart money says that Magnussen will go to will go off to IndyCar but um but there could be a few drivers who will lose. Well, there will be a few drivers who will lose out on seats at at the end of this season in Formula One, and I could see a few of them come to Formula E. Maybe not this season, but at least a season in the future, because um, I think they'd be a decent fit. So your Roman Grosjeans, your Danny Kvyats, your etc. etc. I think I think they'd be a good fit for Formula E in what in whatever team is possible to go to. Because I think, obviously, just talking about the driving market, just wrapping this sort of section up very quickly, because obviously Alex Lynn, we'd expect to go to Mahindra, but it depends on what he wants to do with Aston Martin and the GTE programs and his races there. And I think he wants that seat purely, but whether or not there'll be workarounds, I don't know if there's any clashes in the future, which might cause him not to race. So I fit out there maybe there's like expectations of what we expect to happen, but sometimes what we expect to happen does not happen so as i said it'll be interesting and i and honestly and i'm going to be honest with you with dragon who knows dragon seemed like it's going to be this way but then they could have a completely new different lineup come and now some bk jr could be driving one of their cars it's it stop stop pushing it it's it's it's, it's not going to happen mate it's not going to happen but one thing that i will say about the alex lynn to mahindra thing i reckon that if if they do sign alex lynn they need to put British Alex somewhere in there, so it needs to be British Alex Mahindra Racing Team or something, because they will they will have two drivers, both called Alexander, both British in their team. So I think that would be quite. I think I find that my my youngish mind finds that rather amusing, to be honest. So yeah, the Alex Racing Team. Maybe that's maybe that's why they've gone to sign Alexander Sims and Alexander Lim, Lin. It's a tongue twister, um, <laughs> for me anyway for the markability double alex i don't know but anyway let's move on from that to the last little thing that we want to talk about and that is the lovely thing well i can't say lovely really but i was being more in jest saying that um covid19 um it's back it's back and it's bad um so there is a possibility that we've got this calendar and i don't know how everywhere in the world is doing right now but obviously in the united kingdom it ain't great, but we've got till we've got a good couple of months yet before the London E Prix, and hopefully we ain't start cancelling that. And Nightingale Hospital isn't made in XL again, because otherwise we'll have issues. So what has been interesting, what Formula E are trying to do, is they are looking at normal circuits um, to potentially host race, and we've got some slight information that Silverstone has been contacted. Um, Silverstone has been contacted to potentially host 
an FA race. You didn't think that possibly Valencia probably in talks. You know, those talks are going to Portimao, uh, where Formula One is racing uh, very soon. Um, so I did, there's a lot of, you know, we've got a calendar. We were hoping that come January, you know, we'd be racing in Santiago. Everything would be fine. You know, COVID-19 would be a thing of the past or be dying out. You know, there'd still be some traits with it around the world, but it wouldn't be as big of an issue as it is right now. So I think it's more than likely that we might be seeing some actual racing circuits possibly have to be adapted because if you race at Silverstone, they no way in hell, Jack, would they be racing on the full circuit. They would not be racing on the full circuit, but I'd be surprised if Silverstone, they would, uh, they, they'd either use the national circuit, which is the one that the British touring cars use, or they'd use the other half of the circuit, which is the which is the international, uh, which is the, which is the international circuit. Um, those are the only real two that I've seen on I've seen on racetrack designs on Reddit. All, all, all you lovely people have done these like fancy uh, these fancy tracks where they go through basically the paddock and so. Uh, but however, that's just that's just not really feasible. The only feasible way i think they can have a different track is if they kind of try and incorporate the old layout that hasn't been used since 2009 even then that's a massive long shot and it's not going to happen however what they could do is they could start on the uh, on the old pit straight go through um uh cops maggots beckets and then go on to basically the reverse set the reverse first sector of the circuit but yeah i think uh i think if you do like the reversed section of the first of, of the new bit and then go round the go round the old section on the bridge and through um uh, and uh, and through that lot into um into the old brooklands and round luffield that that is the only way that you can have a silverstone circuit without doing the what, what one of the two well, one of the three main layouts of Silverstone. Um, uh, however, I do think they go for either international or the national circuit. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that there should be a few other tracks on the calendar. So I'm just gonna, and uh, I've had a thought about this, and I've been playing a lot of R Factor this week. So um, so uh, yeah, I've done um, I've done a bit round the short Le Mans circuit. I think that, that should be a, I think that should be probably considered because that's still kind of a city race but it's still um but it's 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 on a proper circuit and um the other one that i was thinking is we've got a portuguese champion so we should go to Estoril um alongside the tra the traditional ones that we that we um talk about all the time valencia where they currently do testing and donington park where they used to do testing i think those are the circuit those are the only circuits that i can think of that i think formula e should definitely consider going to um, but yeah, if if it is at Silverstone, then that's perfect, and, and uh, then that's perfect for me. Or also, also the old sir, the old part of the circuit. I'd like to point out that you can walk that part of the circuit if you visit the Silverstone Experience, located just outside the circuit. So go there. Nice little plug for your yeah. your extra extracurricular let's lose a teaching term extracurricular jobs <laughs> but no for me silverstone for me i think the international circuit is probably the only circuit i wouldn't use national um personally i don't think there's enough corners whereas the international at least you can harvest a little bit through um where you they probably lift off through abbey then you can harvest into village then into farm and then into chapel there's like a big decent braking zone that they could maybe turn that into a, a tough braking right hander i'd possibly put a chicane on the hanger straight for them to just stop halfway through and then lift through um lift through stow and then they'll obviously another hell have a breaking point into Vale. so there would be some breaking points but it would be a very high energy track and i think if they do go to most circuits they would have to adapt them in some way even if you use shortened versions you'd still have to adapt those circuits because that that hanger straight would be very long. Um, but I think it's a real possibility um, with the current climate, with how we find ourselves in the world right now, I think it is absolutely you know a real possibility that actual racing circuits could be where we race. You know, the majority of the European season or 
um, and even in some places like in the Americas, you know, New York, you know, this America is not a great place. And who knows, come June, if America will be a great place. So uh, in terms of COVID-19, that is. So, Jack, I want to say a massive thank you for the show. Um, pleasure as always. Yep, thank you for having me. Well, if you're not even on our Discord, then why aren't you? I think the community is growing really well at the moment on there. I think we've got like over 50 people now, Jack. So uh, if you want to come part of that, get the latest news, uh, heads up about the magazine when that comes out, then hit the magazine below. We also have Twitch. If you want to come support our Twitch channel, the link is in the description below. We're currently having a great football manager save, uh, doing some R Factor 2. Hopefully we'll be picking up some Formula Re content as well very soon on twitch so look out for that and that's uh, pretty much about it if you want to support us on our patreon page then the link is also in the description that helps out a lot you'd be you know superseded into some almighty um level of commitment for formula reason so we would love you if you did that but also just hitting the like button and hitting the subscribe button on youtube or the podcast apps is more than helpful thank you so much for watching you've been watching the FEZ show and we will see you very soon.